Hi, my name is Sean Busselitz. I'm a developer programs engineer on the IMA SDK, and today we're going to talk about what's new and upcoming in the IMA SDK. This talk is comprised of three parts. First, we'll talk about autoplay ads on mobile web. Then we'll discuss the SDK-owned player for Android. And finally, we'll talk about skippable cast ads. Let's start with autoplay ads on mobile web. Until recently, mobile web did not support autoplay video. Video playback required user interaction, and iPhone did not support inline video playback. So what you ended up with was something like the video player you see on the right. You'd show a poster image with a play button on top of it, and when the user clicked the play button, they'd see the video play. On iPhone, they'd see a full screen player, like this. Recent updates to mobile Safari and Android Chrome added support for autoplay for muted inline videos. This is supported in iOS 10 Plus and in Android Chrome 53 Plus. So how do you enable automatic playback of video ads? To take advantage of this new support, add the plays inline and muted attributes to your content video tag. The first plays the video inline on iPhone instead of that full screen player, and the second starts the video muted, which is required for autoplay support. The IMA SDK will sync its ad player with your content player and add these attributes to start the ad muted and inline as well. Let's take a look at a demo. I've got my Android phone here, and I've modified our basic example to support autoplay. When I load the page, you'll see the ad plays automatically without my interaction, and will proceed to content when the ad completes. Now let's talk about the SDK-owned player for the Android SDK. Originally, the Android SDK only supported what we call custom playback, where the ad plays in the same video player as your content. This was due to Android's lack of support for multiple simultaneous video streams when the IMA Android SDK was first released. Recently, we added support for an SDK-owned ad player. If you use this SDK-owned player, the SDK will create its own ad player and place it on top of your content player. This will allow you to maintain your buffer when mid-roll ads play, and greatly simplifies the implementation. This code is for the sample video player from our basic example before we rewrote it to use the SDK-owned player. This code, combined with the video player with ad playback code on the screen now, created the video player used by the sample. When we rewrote the sample to use SDK-owned ad playback, these two slides of code were replaced by the code you see on the screen now. With the SDK-owned player rewrite, we were able to remove 168 lines of code from the basic example. Now let's move on to our final topic, skippable ads in the IMA Cast SDK. I'm going to start off with a demo. What you see on the screen now is my Android phone running a modified advanced example and a TV with our Chromecast receiver. I'm going to select our pre-roll skippable ad and cast that to the TV. This will play a skippable ad on the TV and show a disabled skip button on our phone. When the countdown timer reaches zero, the skip button is enabled, and I can tap on it to skip the ad playing on the TV. So, how did we do this? Before we talk about the implementation, I'm going to go over some definitions. I'm going to talk a lot about the receiver and the sender. The receiver refers to the app running on your TV, and the sender refers to the app running on your phone or tablet. So to recap, the receiver is running on the TV, and the sender is running on your phone or tablet. Let's also talk briefly about the IMA Cast SDK. This is a fairly new SDK, so this may be the first you're hearing about it. The Cast SDK is built on the existing HTML5 SDK. We just tweaked it a bit to support some of the nuances of the Cast environment. It is a completely independent SDK and does not require a sender. All of the ad request and reporting logic happens on the Cast device, not on a sender. You will, however, need a sender to support skippable ads because you need somewhere to put the skip button. Before we go further, I should note that this is a pre-release feature and only supports direct sold ads. The first iteration will not support TrueView, AdSense, and other non-direct sold skippable formats. To show skippable ads on Cast, we're going to follow six steps, but don't worry, each step is quick and simple. First we'll enable the ad UI on the receiver, then explicitly allow skippable ads, then add a skip button to the sender, display it, enable it, and skip the ad when the user taps on it. So let's start with step one, enabling the ad UI. To do this, we just have to add this one line of code to our receiver. This enables ad attribution and the countdown timer in the ad UI, both of which are required for skippable support. You'll notice that we're not enabling a skip button here. That's because the IMA SDK handles that for us. It will automatically show or hide the skip button depending on whether the ad we get back is skippable or not. So that's step one. For step two, we need to explicitly allow skippable ads on the receiver. We need to do this because you need to implement a custom skip button for skippable ads to work, 
and the SDK has no way of knowing if you have this implemented or not. If you have the skip button implemented, you need to tell the SDK that it's okay to serve you skippable ads. This is another one-line addition. Simply get the ads loader's instance of IMA settings and set enable skippable on cast to true. Without this setting, the SDK will drop any skippable ads served to cast as an unsupported ad type. Now that you've got that implemented, you'll see skippable ads on your cast device. There's only one problem. We have no way of clicking on the skip button. So how will we actually skip the ad? Well, that's where sender apps come in. Our next step is to add a skip button to the sender. If you've done any Android development before, this will look familiar. This XML adds a skip button to our app. We're setting the text to skip please wait and disabling clicks because we want to assume that any skippable ad will not be skippable as soon as it renders, but rather at some later time. We're also defaulting its visibility to invisible because we only want to show the button for skippable ads. Now we need to display the skip button when we get a skippable ad. To do this, we're going to use the cast message bus. This is a two-way communication channel between the receiver and the sender that lets them pass simple string messages back and forth. We already used this in the advanced example to disable seeking controls while an ad is playing, so we'll just expand on that implementation here. As I said before, this uses a simple string message format. We're going to use a comma-separated string to specify our command, followed by any parameters required by the sender or receiver to carry out the action specified by that command. We'll start on the receiver. We'll add an onAddStart method, which checks whether or not the SDK returned a skippable ad. We'll then send the addStart command to the sender with one parameter, which is true if we have a skippable ad and false if we have a non-skippable ad. Now on the sender, we'll listen for the addStart command. When we get that command, we'll call showSkipButton with a parameter sent by the receiver and disable the skip button. Now that we're displaying the skip button, we need to enable it when the skip button becomes clickable. Luckily, the SDK already has an event for this, which is skippable state change. We'll listen for that event and again use the message bus to send the skippable state change command along with the skippable state of the ad. Now on the sender, we just expand our switch statement to include the skippable state change command and call enable skip button with the provided parameter. This will enable taps on the skip button. Now that we have the skip button enabled, we need to implement the skip functionality. To do this, we'll start on the sender. We'll add a tap listener to the button, and when that's triggered, we'll fire the skip message to the receiver. Then on the receiver, we'll listen for this message and call ads manager skip in response. This method will only work when an ad is in a skippable state. If you call it on a non-skippable ad, or on a skippable ad whose skip button is still disabled, it will be a no-op. Now let's walk through the demo again to show you how it works. I'll select the skippable ad, then cast it to my TV. The receiver makes the ad request, sees that it has a skippable ad, and sends a message down to the phone to display the skip button. When the countdown timer finishes, the receiver sends another message to the phone to enable that skip button. When I tap on the skip button, the sender sends a message to the receiver to skip the ad, which it does, and the content plays. And that's all I have for you today. If you're looking for more info on what I talked about, you can take a look at the resources linked on the screen now, which are also included in the video description. If you have any questions, feel free to visit us on the support forum, also linked below, and we'll see you around.